back to another one you guys if you are new to the channel my name is Andrew with Younger Toyota in Hagerstown Maryland for more information on our inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we just got this brand new 2023 Calvary Blue XSE Camry in so I wanted to show it off to you guys because I absolutely love this exterior color let me know in the comments if you guys feel the same way but there is one fun change for the 2023 Camry so I'm gonna be going over that along with everything else about this thing so having said that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and get started with the pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 Camry LE trim starts at $25,945 which by the way is a modest $650 price bump from the 2022 model year SE for $27,485 SE nightshade for $28,485 XLE for $30,695 XSE for $31,245 XLE V6 for $35,820 SEV6 for $36,370 and the TRD for $33,010. I told you there was a ton of trim levels. And so with all of these trim levels, they all come standard with front wheel drive, but I will say all wheel drive is available for the four cylinder engine option. So all but those last three trim levels, if you wanted all wheel drive, simply add $1,400 then to any of those prices. So as you can imagine from the trim levels, there are two different power plants for the 2023 Camry. First one being a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder. This one puts out 202 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 182 pound-feet of torque coming in at 4,400 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters, which we will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.8 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 39 on the highway for the front wheel drive, 25 in the city, 34 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then the other engine option, of course, belonging to the V6 trims as well as that TRD trim level being a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 putting out 301 horsepower at 6600 rpm 267 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm power sent to the front wheels only no all-wheel drive available for the V6 unfortunately through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifter zero to 60 time though 5.8 seconds so substantially quicker there of course MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city 31 on the highway but yet again taking regular unleaded fuel so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in the Camry, I wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. There are three buttons located directly behind the shifter labeled Eco, Normal, and Sport, adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. So now how we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the paddle shifters and the acceleration to the test all at the same time here. Let's see how quickly we can get this thing up to speed and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, so before we do this paddle shifter test, I did want to mention to you guys there is a full manual shift mode to engage that. All you need to do is simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. It is then going to tell me what gear I am in up on the digital portion of the gauges. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's pull out onto the road. Let's put this all to the test and yeah let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are actually going to react for us here and it's now shifting for me brilliant a lot of cars will here we go good acceleration actually whoa paddle shifters are decent heck yeah man that's awesome Okay, so the one gripe I got about the paddle shifters is I do wish they were a little bit more high quality, maybe finished in a smoother silver finish or aluminum paddle shifters even would be crazy. But I will say, having said that, I don't really care because the paddle shifters were dang quick and I didn't expect that because this isn't necessarily your typical sport sedan. This is a regular sedan, very reliable sedan, but the paddle shifters are quick. And again, acceleration was plenty enough. It's obviously not gonna be as quick as a V6 option, but still plenty enough to merge you onto the highway or anything like that. So all that checks out perfectly fine for me. But now let's go ahead and touch on the braking because of course that is equally important. So it is gonna differ slightly depending upon the trim level that you go with actually. 12 inch ventilated front discs are gonna come standard for all trim levels, but the TRD, that TRD is actually going to bump that up to 12.9 inch ventilated front disc so that is pretty cool in the back 11 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes 122 feet for all trims but the trd trd is actually going to come in at very impressive 118 feet but i gotta be honest even 122 feet is dang good you guys most sedans will come in into the mid upper 120s is pretty average so lower 120s is dang good i gotta be honest and let's go ahead and just tap the brakes here it's great i love it so 
it feels pretty much on point. Not the firmest braking feel I've ever experienced, but it's definitely not a loose braking feel either. So I am perfectly fine with the brakes on this thing. Then touching on suspension and handling, McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front end rear stabilizer bars. If you were to go with the TRD trim level, you're actually going to get TRD tuned track springs along with TRD tuned stabilizer bars as well. And if you were to go with the SE trim levels, you're also going to get front strut tower bracing as well didn't expect that that is pretty cool but overall as far as ride quality goes it's probably the first thing i noticed and honestly this is the perfect car for me to test drive because i own a new model hyundai sonata and i can tell you guys as far as ride quality goes this thing beats my sonata all freaking day this is a very smooth ride so i'm very impressed with that not only that the steering feel is better as well it has a heavier weight to it so instantly points me in the direction that i want to go i will say with my sonata if i put it in a sport driving mode it does adjust that steering feel quite substantially to maybe what this is right now but honestly i still love the steering feel in the camry so big fan of that as far as cabin noise goes guys can probably tell i am driving right now there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise or road noise really coming into the cabin whatsoever even when i was going 55 back there it still wasn't all that bad and that's due in part because we do have an acoustic laminated front windshield that comes standard on every single trim level of the camera you gotta love that because that isn't always the case in all sedans out there so that is pretty cool and when it comes to visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back you're not going to have any issues with a shape like the camry is so definitely no issues with rear visibility did want to also mention though head-up display actually does come standard with both the xle v6 and the xse v6 trim level so that is essentially going to project your speed speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield so better helps keep your eyes on the road so that's going to assist with forward visibility then as well but anyways that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's still go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Toyota Camry. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Toyota Camry, and I'll throw a window sticker on the screen here for you guys just so you know that it is indeed a 2023, but Calvary Blue is the exterior color that we have here today. It is, without a doubt, my very favorite color on the Camry, the most vibrant, definitely one of my favorite colors really for all cars this thing looks absolutely amazing but anyways let's go ahead and start up front on the camera here front fascia is going to differ amongst the trim levels for example if you were to go with the se versus the le the se trims essentially are going to give you what you are currently looking at right now a lot more gloss black accents a lot less body colored accents the le on the other hand is going to essentially replace these gloss black accents with body colored accents in case you wanted to know and then also there's going to be an added front splitter and then a unique front fascia for the trd D trim level which is essentially the very sportiest trim level available for the Camry but to the sides then LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board gotta love that LED daytime running lights also coming standard automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there also wanted to mention in regards to the headlight housings they are going to differ amongst the trim levels as well SE trim is going to kind of give you those dark headlight housings whereas the LE trims are going to kind of give you lighter or clear headlight housing so did want to mention that as well and then down to the sides you will find front air cartons specifically for the trd trim level but that pretty much rounds out the front end here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the camry all right so now making our way to the side this is probably my favorite look on the camry this side profile looks absolutely amazing specifically that c pillar in the back looks kind of like a sob which i've always liked the look of sobs i think i said that in my review of the camry last year as well so absolutely love the c pillar on this thing but anyways first thing i want to mention is two-tone paint options are available meaning a different color roof than the rest of the body of the camry obviously don't have that today that is a good thing because you want this particular paint color that we have all over the place so that's definitely a very good look body colored side skirts come standard on all trim levels but the trd because the trd is going to add unique black side skirts to match up with the front splitter that i just mentioned to you guys body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard gloss black side mirrors however are going to come on the TRD trim level. Heated side mirrors are coming with the XLE, XSE, and TRD trims with LED integrated turn signals, again, for those three as well. So that is currently, of course, what you're looking at since we have the XSE trim level here with us today. Taking a look down to the wheel setup then, it's gonna differ pretty substantially amongst the trim levels. 17 inch alloys for the LE, 18 inch machine finished alloys for the XLE trim levels, 19 inch gloss black alloys for the XSE trim levels. That that's currently what you guys are looking at right now of course trd trim is going to widen those wheels a little bit 19 by 8.5 inch matte black alloys and then with the nightshade this is really the cool 
upgrade for the 2023 Camry that is going to be bronze. You're actually going to get 19 inch matte bronze alloys. Definitely the very best looking wheels. Personally, what I would do is go with the SE Nightshade and get the bronze wheels with this Calvary blue exterior. I think that would look absolutely amazing without a doubt. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so this Calvary blue just got even better now that we are around back and the sun is shining on it. But anyways, gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top. When it comes to the rear spoilers, the TRD trim level is going to give you obviously a TRD specific gloss black rear spoiler. Otherwise, body color rear spoilers are available and you guys currently are looking at that right now. Of course, you're going to get some trim level badging back there as well. LED taillights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. You will get a gloss black rear diffuser for the TRD trim level specifically and exhaust setup is going to differ amongst the trims, but I love the SE trims because for the SE trim levels at least, you do get dual exhaust outlets with quad chrome tips, which is currently what you're looking at right now. And then that TRD trim is going to give you a gloss black rear diffuser i almost forgot to mention that so that is pretty cool as well but anyway since we have this particular setup with us here today i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip <laughs> And so but now since we are around to the back of the Camry, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there's several different ways to go ahead and do that. There's a button on the key fob, of course. The uh, button that's on the trunk itself, it's maybe not where you would think it would be. It's not in the middle. It's actually uh, located just underneath the back, kind of to the right of the Y, closer to that passenger side taillight. So didn't want to point that out. But nonetheless, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 15.1 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. But one of the most surprising things I found in the cargo area is there's actually two grocery bag hooks, which you typically find in SUVs, but very rarely on actual sedans. So I did find that pretty cool. There's also some uh, cargo net attachments just next to those. There's some cargo lighting back there. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire along with all of the tools to go ahead and change that. So that's pretty cool. But then make our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at an even 38 inches. So for reference, I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders in the back. There's front seat back mat pockets as well. Rear ventilation is going to come with the XLE and XSE trim level. So for example, it's not going to come on the SE trim. So didn't want to emphasize that. And unfortunately, there's no charging ports for those rear passengers either. But then make our way up to the front seats. Eight-way power driver seat does come standard, but it comes with probably the most adjustable lumbar support I've ever experienced. So for that reason, these seats were incredibly comfortable. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. Cloth finish comes with the LE, soft tex upholstery coming with the SE trims, full leather seating then coming with the XLE and XSE trim levels, heated front seats then coming with the XLE, XSE and TRD trims, ventilated front seats then are going to be optional. But like I said, incredibly comfortable seats basically due to that incredibly adjustable power lumbar support. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trim levels. And if you wanted a heated steering wheel, that is going to be optional for the V6 trim levels only. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Camry specific key with the Camry lettering on the one side, but essentially all of your buttons are located on the other side of the key. Lock, unlock, and that button to uh, pop the rear trunk there. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the XLE, XSE, and TRD. All the other trim levels is going to give you that traditional turnkey start. But we do have that push button start today, so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button. So when it comes to the gauges, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is all the way to your right. There is a small digital display front and center giving you things like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit it empty. There's a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to go that route as well. But so then making our way to overall interior quality, there is a panoramic glass roof for the XLE V6 and XSE V6 trim levels. Home lane controls coming for the XLE and XSE trims. Dual zone climate control is going to be available 
available on this one wireless phone charger for the XLE trim level and up aluminum pedals coming with the TRD and that TRD actually also gives you some added red stitching throughout the interior as well ambient interior lighting for the XLE trim then in front of the shifter you're actually going to get a USB charging port a 12 volt power outlet and if your Camry is equipped at least a wireless phone charger that's where that's going to be located electromechanical parking brake behind the shifter you got your dual cup holders there to the right and within the center armrest an actual very good bit of storage typically in sedans you don't have that much storage so that's pretty cool and there's a couple charging ports within that as well but then making our way to the infotainment screen it is going to differ amongst the trim levels seven inch color touchscreen display for the le se and nightshade trims nine inch color touchscreen display for all of the other trim levels then so that includes bluetooth and audio streaming either way android auto apple carplay either way factory navigation system is going to be optional for the v6 trim levels you can actually check out your driving statistics up there along with your radio information of course and so when it comes to the sound systems there are two of them six speakers is going to be your standard sound system which i tested last year and it really wasn't that bad it was pretty darn good but there is a nine speaker JBL sound system that is going to come standard on the XLE V6 and XSE V6 trim levels. But since we don't have the V6 with us here today, we do have the four cylinder. We do have that six speaker sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. God, whoa, whoa, that was, that was a really good sound system for not being like an aftermarket sound system from like Bose or Bowers and Wilkins or Harman Kardon or something like that. Really good amount of bass. Honestly, Skrillex sounded pretty darn good on that sound system here in our Camry without a doubt. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Camry in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board and a 360 degree monitor is going to be available, although it does not come standard, but as always that is going to lead us into safety. So first let me start with IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS that I pretty much says it all right there. Front side, side curtain airbags, not just that driver and front passenger knee airbags, which doesn't always come standard on sedans. And it continues to get better rear seat mounted side impact airbags, which almost never comes standard is even optional on like BMW for a few hundred dollars, but it comes standard on the Camry. So that's pretty cool. Also in the back though, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, of course, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard will be Toyota safety sense 2.5 plus so that is going to include a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist automatic high beams lane tracing assist road sign assist and dynamic radar cruise control as well and then if you were to go with the x se trim level and up you're going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the camry possibly the smoothest ride in its class believe it or not that one kind of surprised me i do know because i have the newer body style Sonata. I do know it's smoother than my Sonata. I know it's smoother than the Kia K5. I know it's smoother than the Accord as well. So like I said, really a pretty darn smooth ride for what the Camry is. Incredibly reliable as well. That's basically what Toyota is known for, of course. Excellent safety with that IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Available all-wheel drive is excellent because you can't say that for all of their sedans in its class. Take, for example, the Hyundai Sonata or the Honda Accord. You can't get all-wheel drive with those, so I do like the availability there. As always, let me know what you guys think of the Camry in the comments section below. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow Younger Toyota at social media at the bottom of the screen. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews and everything else that goes on at the dealership. We do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and we will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.